I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to overcome resentment. How to overcome resentment. Resentment is such a root of all kinds of evil. We know we heard money is the root of all kinds of evil, which is not true. It's really the love of money is the root of all evil. But I'm gonna tell you, resentment is right there with the love of money because resentment man can cause you to miss out on so many blessings that God has for you. In fact, your body, your mind, your spirit is not even designed to contain resentment. God never created you for resentment. That is handcrafted by the devil to keep you in disappointment, to keep you in disgust, and to keep you in anger. That's the definition of resentment right there. It's a complex emotion designed to keep you in disappointment, disgust, and anger. And see, the thing is, man, in life, Jesus has told us that we will have troubles. Jeremy, we will have troubles. Tiffany, we will have troubles. Angela, we will have troubles. Remy, we will have troubles. Trouble will come. But guess what? He also says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the love world. Man, we have as believers, we have Jesus Christ living inside of us to keep resentment out of us. We don't have, they said, we don't have time for that. But resentment can easily creep in if you're not careful. That's why we have to learn, as my grandmother said, we have to learn how to love everybody. And we have to forgive everybody. See, every time we love and we forgive, guess what? We keep resentment out. But if we don't do that, if we harbor anger, if we harbor disappointment, if we harbor disgust, man, it's like a cancer. You don't see it and sometimes you don't feel it until it gets so bad, it starts taking over your mood, it starts taking over your emotions, it starts taking over your mind, it makes you sick. And then guess what? You'll wonder why you don't have any friends. You'll wonder why you come one way and then the coworkers walk out the other way. It's because you're still harboring resentment. And guess what? God never designed us to carry resentment. In fact, say it with me. God never designed me to carry resentment. The only thing that God has called me to carry is love, acceptance, and forgiveness. In other words, God has called me to laugh. Not L-A-U-G-H, but L-A-F to love, to accept, and to forgive people no matter what. Let me tell you something. If you learn how to laugh that way, to learn how to love, to learn how to accept, and learn how to forgive people, guess what, man? You won't have time for resentment. In fact, you will be walking on holy ground. <laughs> You will be walking on blessed ground. You will be have you will inherit the favor of God in your life. See, the promises of God for us are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. God designed us to live an abundant life to the full, till it overflows, until we have so much that we have to pour it into the lives of other people. That's the life that Jesus came for us to have. Jesus did not come for us to have a barely get by life. Jesus did not come for us to hold resentment in our hearts. We can't do that. You and I can't afford to do that. And let me speak on this. Especially those who are married, the enemy will come and use anything against your marriage. Let me repeat that one more time. The enemy will come and use anything in your marriage to get you to harbor resentment guys you know if you forget to take the trash out you know i pray that your wife don't hold you accountable for that and harbor resentment man we are all gonna make mistakes in marriage see if you think you're gonna get married and think your marriage is gonna be perfect somebody didn't lie to you I'm gonna tell you right now, if you don't have Jesus in your marriage, if you don't have love, acceptance, and forgiveness in your marriage, if you don't know how to laugh, love, accept, and forgive, L-A-F in your marriage, man, it is not going to work. You say, well, Dr. Sure, well, I know some people that have been married for 20 or 30 years, 
you know, and they don't laugh. Okay, guess what? Well, maybe they are in a pseudo marriage. Maybe they're marriage on paper, but not the way God designed them. Oh man, I don't know why I'm on marriage this morning. I feel like God is telling me that marriages are under attack or marriages that seem like they broke and can't be fixed. Man, do you know God can fix anything? I'm gonna repeat that. God can fix anything. God can fix you. God can fix your spouse. God can fix your marriage. You just have to trust and believe that he can do it. And another thing, you know, while I'm on here, man, you have to pray for your spouse. Man, your spouse ain't perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And our job and being married is to pray for our spouse. God gave us our spouse to be our helpmate because none of us got it all together. I'm going to repeat that. I don't have it all together. My wife don't have it all together. None of us all together have it all together. But guess who does? Jesus has it all together. The Holy Spirit has it all together. Did you know the Holy Spirit is that third strand in your marriage? The Holy Spirit is that person that actually can hold your marriage together when you feel like it's falling apart. Ooh, I'm going to repeat that. The Holy Spirit is that third strand in your marriage that can keep it together when you feeling like it's falling apart. It reminds me of doing braids. Have anybody heard about doing braids? You know how you braid your hair? I don't know anybody that can braid your hair with just three strands. I mean, sorry, two strands. Because I don't believe, somebody help me out out there, those who know how to braid hair, a plait hair as they say. Can you plait hair with just two strands? And if you can, will it stay? I don't know, but I don't think you can do that. Well, that's just like Holy Spirit speak this word to the people. That's just like you trying to get married. If you just only have two strands and you try to braid together, it's not gonna stay. It's gonna be frail. It's gonna unwind. It's gonna not look right. But if you have those three strands. Come on, that Holy Spirit. And that's how I remember braiding hair. I remember when I had long hair, I braided my own hair for a minute. So we said, Dr. Short, well, you had long hair? I sure did. Those y'all know me. Y'all knew I had long hair and they used to call me a girl. And I said, mom, you got to cut this stuff off. So she did give me a haircut and I did get the Michael Jackson cut. But guess what? I said, you know what? I want to have a box haircut and I want you to make me a rat tail. See, some of y'all don't know about the rat tail. So you got to be, you got to be around those 80s. <laughs> me, the late 80s, know about a rat tail. And guess what? I learned how to braid it. And if I just used two strands to, of my hair, it wouldn't have stayed. But guess what? I learned how to use three strands. So Dr. Show, what's your point? That third strand is the Holy Spirit. That third strand is what holds everything together. And not just in marriage, man, that's in life. The Holy Spirit is that person that's doing all the work in the earth. I'm gonna repeat that. The Holy Spirit is the person, third person of the Trinity, that's doing all the work in the earth. He's working in you, he's working in me, he's working on our situation, but a lot of us, don't know how to activate the Holy Spirit. Some of us don't even know how to even talk to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you say, well, Dr. Short, you're going so deep right now, I don't know if I can I can make it. Well, yeah, you can. You throw on this life preserver. Throw on Jesus. Jesus is the life preserver. So the Holy Spirit is our wisdom. He's our counsel and he's our God. Say it with me. Holy Spirit is our wisdom. He's our counsel and he is our guide. The Holy Spirit is the master of keeping resentment out of our lives. I'm gonna repeat that. The Holy Spirit is the master teacher to keep resentment out of our lives. You say, well, Dr. Short, well, ain't nothing about the Holy Spirit, but the resentment is in my life right now. What do I do? Okay, let me tell you. I'm glad you asked. There's three things you need to do. Number one is you acknowledge that you have resentment. Acknowledge you have something in your heart against somebody that's creating disgust, disappointment, and anger because that's the definition of resentment. It's a multi-level, multi-level, multi-layered, complex emotion. 
caused by disappointment, all right, disgust and anger. First, you have to admit that, you know what, I have resentment. Lord, I have resentment. You got to say, Lord, I have resentment and you need to help me. Please help me. And then guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to go and start to work your heart. And guess what the first thing he's going to tell you to do? Forgive. Well, Dr. Short, well, you don't know what they did to me. Forgive. Well, you don't know what they did to my spouse. Forgive. You don't know what they did to my son. Forgive. You don't know what they did to my daughter. Forgive. Well, you don't know, you know, they, they stole money out of my bank account. Forgive. Well, they did not give me the, the respect that I deserve at my job. Forgive. Well, they did not, you know, um, um, they did not even come and help me when my car broke down. They were supposed to be my boyfriend or girlfriend. Forgive. If you want to uproot resentment out of your life, you have to forgive. That's number two. And number three is that you have to move forward. You have to move forward with your life. So what? They left you. So what? Your spouse walked out of you. I'm not saying to ignore that emotion, but you cannot hold resentment against your spouse. Okay, you had your coworker, you know, rat on you. Forgive. You had the person that you employed and you spent all kinds of resources training them and all of a sudden they left you for a different job with a 50 cent pay raise. Forgive. You know, you have... You know, you have your whole staff that you've trained and all of a sudden one day they decide to gang up on you and walk out. Forgive, God can bring you a new staff. Did you know everything that you've lost, God can bring you back, bring back to you with extra? Look at Job. Job lost everything. Job lost his children. Job lost his family. He lost his health. He lost his business. But he decided that he is not going to allow resentment to take root in his mind. And he went to God and he asked God all these questions. And at first he didn't think God was listening. Listen, and finally God spoke out and he checked Job. And he said, basically, who do you think I'm? Who do you think created the world? Who do you think created the stars? Who do you think created all the animals? It's me. And guess what, Job? Oh, come on, Holy Spirit. Guess what Job had to do before Kristen, before he was filled back with everything he lost, he had to forgive and he had to pray for his friends. Oh my goodness. He had to forgive, number one, and he had to pray for his friends. So you don't remember anything else to uproot resentment in your life. You have to forgive and then you have to pray for that person that hurt you. And then guess what? All of a sudden, you're going to start living on an open heaven and all these blessings are going to come and chase you down. You're not going to have to even look for your blessings, Kristen. You're not going to have to look for your blessings, Mike. You're not going to have to look for your blessings, Jessica. They will come and chase you down. That is a spiritual law. I'm telling you, not only what I think, I'm telling you what I know. I'm, I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I've experienced it. I've experienced it. That's why Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Because he know that that's a key because he does not want you to get bogged down in resentment. So let me recap. So resentment is a multi-level, multi-complex emotional issue that's designed to stop you, that's designed to keep you from being everything God has called you to be. And that's dealing with disappointment, disgust, and anger. Disappointment, disgust, and anger. And these three things is a concoction to cause you to miss out on everything that God has planned for you. And the, the antidote to that is Realize that you have resentment. You tell God, God, I have resentment and I need your help. I need your divine help. Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to come into my heart and unpack all this resentment that I have, all this anger. Number two is to pray and forgive. You pray for that person that hurt you and you forgive them. Repeat that. You pray for that person who hurt you and you forgive them. That's number two. And number three, 
you walk out in faith. You walk forward, you move forward. You don't, see, you don't live your life in reverse. You live your life moving forward. Overcoming resentment. Hope you got something out this message. If you did, you cra if you didn't, you crazy. If you did, awesome. Click like, click love, share this message, go and subscribe to my YouTube page. I have many, many messages, maybe 500 messages on any and every area in life that you'll be challenged with because Jesus even said that we will have trials in this life of be of good cheer because he has overcome the world and he has messages and he has messengers. Some people say, oh, you're Reverend Rico. No, I'm not a Reverend, man. I'm just a messenger. I'm just, I just want to point you to the one that can fix your problems. I can't fix your problems, but I can point you to the one who can. I can point you to Jesus. I can point you to the Holy Spirit. I can point you to our Abba, our Father. All right, I'm done. Love y'all. Have a terrific day.